Okay, we're going to have a look at the integration topic. Now, lots of stuff that we can learn in this topic. Right at the start, we're going to remind you about uh, the basic rules. You should be familiar with uh, basic integration of polynomial expressions uh, of integrating cos x and sin x. The developments here down at the bottom are really just basically using the uh, the chain rule effect or they're having to deal with composite functions which you probably don't use a, a rule like that for but you've got an idea of knowing uh, to divide by the new power and kind of stuff so it's working within a function within a function so don't worry about the the look on that but just being able to to work with polynomials uh, and cos and sine terms in our integration so a wee reminder of some of these just to get your brain back into the world of integration uh, the integral of x to the power of 5 with respect to x, uh, the rule that we have, the shortcut would be to write down the term and add 1 to the power of x, divide by the new power, the, uh, x to the power of 6 divided by 6, and we always, when we're integrating, add a constant of integration, because when we differentiate, integration being anti-differentiation, the constant term would disappear, and therefore we don't know if there was one to start with. So there we go, constant of integration, and there's the answer, x to the 6 over 6, or 6 x to the 6, and we could write it as that instead. Either way is fine. Um, second example, we've got a composite function. We've got 3a minus 4 to the power of 3. That was one of the development formulas in the previous uh, slide there. So if we are integrating that, the rule is we write down the uh, inside function, 3a minus Four, we're going to increase the power by 1 to the power 4. We divide by the new power, but also we have to multi or divide also by the derivative of the inside term, which is 3. So we're going to divide by 3 as well, which, because we're dividing by both 4 and 3, we can write as a multiplication on the denominator plus c. So our answer would be a 12, so dividing by 12 of 3a minus 4 to the power of 4 plus c. So you, you might have a diff slightly different way of approaching that, uh, but that's what your answer should be. We know that because if we were to differentiate, and you can always check, if we were to differentiate that here, we'd end up with the original expression. Let's have a look at uh, some trig integration. Uh, we've got uh, a half cos of x over 4 plus 1. Remember that if you've got a constant term, we can always uh, take that out of the integration. You don't have to, but um, you can if things are a wee bit more complicated. Uh, we know, therefore, that we've got a half. The integral of cos of anything, cos, the integral of cos x is sine x. Therefore, we've got a composite function again, uh, which means that we're going to write down the, the integral of function that we're given. So we've got the sine of x over 4 plus 1, but we must divide that by the derivative of the inside term. So we're dividing by a quarter. You could do it like that. We've got a constant of integration. Uh, dividing by a quarter is the same as multiplying by 4. Uh, so we've basically got 4 times a half sine x over 4 plus 1 plus c. And 4 times a 1 half is 2. And therefore, our answer would be 2 sine x over 4 plus 1 plus a constant of integration. So hopefully these are kind of familiar uh, functions there. And we'll have a look at this last one. Well, sine squared integral is sine squared x. Well, we can't really do that just now. Um, we have a problem with, the temptation would be to do, uh, it's just uh, keep it as it is. Uh, but what we have to do is to think about a substitution that we can actually use instead of sine squared. You might think you can integrate everything that you can differentiate. Now, we can differentiate uh, sine squared x. Okay, We can differentiate sine squared x by thinking about it 
like that. But unfortunately, we can't integrate sine square x by thinking the same way. Okay? It just doesn't. Okay? Trust me. So what we have to do is we have to think about a way of substituting sine mm. square x. And it comes from our double angle formulas. If you remember, uh, let's just try and have a look here. Uh, cos 2x is equal to cos square x minus sine square x. It also, uh, with a bit of extra substitution, uh, would be cos 2 cos squared x minus 1 and 1 minus 2 sine squared x. These are your three uh, double angle formulae that hopefully you already are familiar with. And if we take a one that's got sine squared here, and we're saying that cos 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x, and rearrange that, 2 sine squared x equals 1 minus cos 2x, we end up with sine squared x equals a half of 1 minus cos 2x. So, you could remember that, or you could memorise it, or you could try and kind of work it out as I just did there. But that's what we're going to use as our substitution. I thought you said this was going to be just an easy revision. Well, you might or might not have come across that already in our integration. Right at the start, I just want to say don't integrate sine squared or cos squared. So what we have to do is we actually need to replace sine squared x with this here. So it's a half of 1 minus the cos of 2 of x, which in this case is x of 3. Just jump in with a composite term. So there we go. We can multiply the angle by uh, the 2. I'm going to take the half out of my integral. So I've got basically 1 minus cos 2x over 3 dx. Don't even need that bracket in there. So, in actual fact, having done what is a slightly complex uh, substitution, I'm left with something that's reasonably straightforward. So let's have a look at what we then do. We're integrating with respect to x, so that when I see a 1 and integrate it, then it becomes x. Uh, we're then integrating negative cos 2x over 3. Cos integrates to sine. Negative cos integrates to negative sine, so it's minus sine of 2x over 3, which is the inside function. But we have to divide by the derivative of this uh, function 2x over 3, which is 2 thirds. I'll just put it like that at the moment. So we've got a half of x. Now dividing by 2 thirds is the same as multiplying by 3 over 2. And only applies, of course, to the sine term, not to the x term at the front. But this half does. A half is a multiplier for both of them. We could leave it like that, or I could say that it's x over 2 minus a half times 3 over 2 is 3 over 4 sine 2x over 3 plus c. So uh, that's slightly, uh, it was slightly more challenging than it looked like at the beginning. Um, we had to use our little rule to substitute in, and it's good to kind of try and even at this stage remember these things. Okay, so that's the first example a wee bit of basic integration. If you need to go back and practice it, do so, because if you can't do that, you're not going to be able to do the next stuff. Okay?